Steamboats were an important part of American society during the 1800s, especially during the middle of the century. They helped improve cross-continental travel and trade on the major waterways of the young nation. In 1787, John Fitch became the first inventor of a steamboat in the U.S. with a travel of a 45-foot-long steamboat on the Delaware River. He later built a larger ship that carried passengers and freight down the same river in 1790, but it was shut down after a short time. A major step in steamboat development came in 1807 when Robert Fulton, an inventor who owned large amounts of land along the Hudson River in New York, built the Claremont. Fulton and his partner, Robert Livingston, obtained a monopoly on Hudson River traffic and created the first successful commercial steamboat operation with a route from New York City to Albany. The use of steamboats in the U.S. greatly increased after this. In 1811, the first steamboat traveled from Pittsburgh down the Ohio River, then on the Mississippi en route to New Orleans, becoming an important route for transportation and commerce. Additionally, in 1817, steamboats began operation on Lake Ontario and the Great Lakes. By the 1850s, river steamboats usually used rear-mounted paddles and had flat bottoms and shallow hulls in order to carry large loads on smooth, sometimes shallow rivers. In contrast, ocean-going paddle steamboats typically utilize side-wheel paddles, along with narrow and deeper hulls designed for rough seas. Most steamboats were made of wood, typically ranging from about 40 to 300 feet in length and 10 to 80 feet wide. Steamboats often had a second deck for cabins and passenger areas. The boats could become quite luxurious, with velvet, plush chairs, and parlors. Generally, steamboats only lasted about five years due to poor maintenance, wooden hulls being breached, and the risks of fire and boiler explosions. Accidents on steamboats were common during this time, with 411 damage due to fires and boiler explosions from 1811 to 1899 between the Ohio River and St. Louis, Missouri, and another 156 sunk due to snags or rocks. However, while early trips up the Mississippi took about three weeks to get from New Orleans to its confluence with the Ohio River, with better pilots and more powerful engines, this was reduced to a quick journey of four days. Such rapid movement in an era with no cars, few railroads, and shoddy roads helped ensure the popularity of steamboat travel despite the risks. The acquisition of Oregon and California in the mid-1840s opened the West Coast to American steamboat traffic. Beginning in 1848, Congress subsidized the Pacific Mail Steamship Company in order to set up passenger, mail, and cargo routes in the Pacific Ocean. This route went from East Coast seaports to Panama City, across the Isthmus of Panama on foot, and then north in the Pacific to San Francisco. Such a trip could be done in about 40 days, significantly less than the 200 required to go around Cape Horn, the southernmost point on the South American continent. An important development was the creation of the Panama Railroad in 1855, which made the trip across the Isthmus much faster and more reliable. This enabled the Panama route to become by far the quickest and easiest way to travel from California to the East Coast, at least until the creation of the Transcontinental Railroad in 1869. For most of the 19th century, trade on the Mississippi River was largely done with paddle wheel steamboats. Their utilization helped spur rapid development of port cities and areas along major rivers, along with the growth of agricultural and commodity products, which could be transported to markets more easily. Steamboats enjoyed a great deal of prestige and popularity during this time. For instance, the steamboat Iowa, one of the largest and speediest boats operating on the Mississippi during the mid-1800s, is included on the Iowa State Seal as a symbol of progress and power. Another use of steamboats was as showboats, which were essentially floating theaters. These were common on the Mississippi and Ohio rivers. A showboat was generally a barge resembling a long, flat-roofed house that was pushed by a small tugboat down the river. The first showboat was created by actor William Chapman in 1831 and named the Floating Theater. The crew of 11 performed plays with music and dance on the boat at stops along the waterways, floating from Pittsburgh to New Orleans. By the middle of the 1800s, showboats could seat up to 3,400 people, and often featured wax museums and equestrian shows. Women began to become steamboat captains in the late 1800s. Mary Millicent Miller was the first woman to earn her steamboat master's license in 1884. Carrie Leach French was another major female captain, operating on the Mississippi River. Finally, Mary Becker Green, along with her husband, started the Green Line in 1890, which operated on the Ohio River. Steamboats gradually lost traffic to railroads in the late 1800s as they expanded across the country and provided cheaper transport options. Today, five major commercial steamboats operate on the rivers and lakes of the U.S. The American Queen is the only remaining overnight cruising steamboat, which can carry 432 passengers and operates on the Mississippi and Ohio rivers.